When you see a perfect render, or a sequence in an animation movie, or maybe a VFX shot that looks so incredible, this is not voodoo magic, because this was created by 3D artists who acquired skills and honed them over the years. They just follow certain techniques and practices that we'll discuss in this video that will hopefully give you some good insights. If you look at environments made by beginners, you will notice some problems with the scale of the scene, and sometimes when you see that, it will leave you unsure about the size of certain objects. You might be surprised, but the scale of the objects actually has an impact on the accuracy of your renders, because render engines take into account object size to render it accurately. Professionals solve this by incorporating scale reference objects and adhering to real-world measurements. For instance, in architectural visualization, you will see designers and architects almost always drop a generic human figure, maybe a car or other familiar objects or items, like a door, chair, etc. into the scene. This gives you an immediate sense of proportion. In fact, this is a practice every artist should adopt and use as a scale reference object to double check that your model size is correct and especially make sure that proportions make sense. This means that if a table is 1 meter tall, or 3 feet in reality, it is modeled to be 1 meter in the software. Lighting and physics often behave more realistically at true scale, and this prevents inconsistencies. Using reference objects can help here as well. For example, loading a 1.8 meter, or 6 feet tall human dummy model in a software such as Blender, while modeling a room ensures that all the furniture is appropriately scaled. This helps you avoid problems like when objects are too big or the texture scale makes objects appear like toy-like. So a good practice to go over is to double-check the measurement and compare your render against photos of your environments to verify scale accuracy. A very big or important part of rendering is using cameras. And one subtle technique professionals use is lens distortion. When applying subtle lens distortion to a 3D scene, compared to a perfectly linear render, you will see some interesting difference. The slight barrel distortion, especially at the edges, makes the image feel more like it was shot with a real camera lens, rather than being a computer render. The thing is, viewers are accustomed to seeing a bit of lens bending in photos, so introducing this imperfection adds realism. This use of lens distortion can help give the outside world a familiar, organic look. In a similar fashion, many 3D artists add slight barrel distortion, or even a hint of chromatic aberration, and vignetting in post-processing to break the overly clean 3D look and match what a physical camera would actually capture. By the way, there is an add-on called LensSim, which is a Blender add-on that helps you create and simulate camera lenses based on real-world optical data. By using it, you can easily choose and render dozens of lenses. This add-on is actually really popular now, so you might want to take a look at it. The link will be in the description. Beginners also often output crystal clear renders, but professionals know that real footage is rarely grain-free. So by overlaying a subtle thin grain or noise texture onto a render, you introduce a slight analog roughness that ensures eyes associate with film and high-end photography. The difference can be subtle on screen, but it breaks up perfectly smooth areas and helps composite 3D renders with live footage. Also, in professional VFX pipelines, matching the film grain of live action plates is a standard practice. Compositors will often add a grain pass over VFX elements so that they inherit the same noise level as the footage, making the composition seamless. And seasoned VFX artists know that in the era of actual film and lower fidelity footage, they always had to add a bunch of grunge and grain to their renders to help them set the scene realistically. Even today, high-end productions like to include a touch of noise in purely CGI shots to avoid a too clean digital look. This approach is echoed by 3D communities as well, because it is often advised that you don't forget to add a little grain as one of those final polish steps to make renders feel less fake. 
especially when composited with real footage. Sometimes, if you look closely at some renters, you often have some elements looking really sharp, but professionals use depth of field to add depth and guide the viewer's attention in a natural way. Depth of field is one of the most powerful cinematography tricks that 3D artists adopt to achieve realism. You see, by narrowing the focus range, you can create a sense of scale and distance. Objects outside of the focal plane gently blur out, just as they would through a camera lens. It might sound complicated, but it is actually simple in concept. Seasoned artists treat the 3D camera like a real one, choosing lens focal lengths and f-stop values to achieve the desired depth of field. Shallow focus is used deliberately to highlight subjects or create a mood. In fact, the hallmark of professional renders is often the careful use of depth of field, direct the eye and add some cinematic flair. Now let me give you an example in architectural renders. In this case, a touch of depth of field can make a product shot or interior design feel more like an expensive photo shoot compared to a 3D render. Once you pay attention to some examples, I'm sure you will realize that. In film productions, studios often employ depth of field for storytelling emphasis. Generally speaking, the key is control. Professionals adjust focus distance, in addition to aperture, to balance sharp details on the focal point with pleasing bokeh in the background, for example. The subtle focus falloff is often ignored by beginners, but it is pivotal in breaking the 3D look and adding that professional realism, especially if this is your goal. Beyond what we talked about already, you need to put significant effort into color grading your renders in post-production. The same process is used in film production, where a colorist fine-tunes the colors, contrast, and the mood of the shots. In 3D, a raw render can look flat, whereas a graded render has a cohesive atmosphere, which can actually look pleasant. You might be surprised to hear this, but artists can create a story through color. A side-by-side -side comparison of an ungraded versus a graded render often shows a dramatic improvement in mood in addition to realism. The graded version will have more depth, balanced contrast, and a filmic color balance. In studios, every render or VFX shot goes through a color grading pass to match the project's visual style and ensures consistency across different shots. They often pre-plan their lighting with a grading target in mind, and they might render a flat or neutral color profile and then perform a grade to reach the final contrast and new balance. The result is a polished image with intentional mood, whether it is a bleak, desaturated tones of a dystopian scene, or a vibrant shot, and generally grading is a step that pushes the render from a simply good to a truly cinematic render. It is a subtle art, but it has a huge impact on how professional the final render can look. Last but not least, we're going to talk about asymmetry and imperfections. A common giveaway of amateur 3D art is perfect symmetry and perfectly aligned objects. You see, for example, character left and right sides, you will notice that they are identical, but in reality, nothing is perfectly symmetrical. Professional artists deliberately introduce asymmetry and small imperfections to make assets look organic and believable. For example, a character's face might have one eyebrow raised, I mean slightly higher, or a tiny variation of the two halves of the smile. These imperfections make the character feel alive. Likewise, a row of books on the shelf shouldn't be perfectly aligned. One should lean or stick out a bit. A symmetry goes hand in hand with adding imperfections. You should add tiny flaws, like scratches, dents, slight color variations, and so on. But perfectly uniform surfaces or geometries can scream computer-generated. Think of a brand new car model. A 3D beginner might leave it factory perfect, but a professional will add the faintest hint of dust, maybe a small scuff or uneven reflections, so it looks like a real car which has been in the real world. So whether it is architecture, products, or characters, introducing imperfections and asymmetry, of course, 
within reasonable bounds of the subject. This helps the viewer to subconsciously register the object of the render as more believable and realistic. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.